Hi, I'm sure you've heard the news. My favorite fictional character, my favorite non-fictional human are morphing to bring us what is already my favorite film ever made. The Barbie movie comes out in 354 days, and we don't even have a trailer for it yet, but we have gotten a few glimpses of the upcoming masterpiece. And I'm obsessed with every single image thus far. Except this image. This one makes me hope I have the gene for early onset dementia so that I can forget I ever saw it. But let's talk about this look. The bell bottoms, the pink overload, the stars, the yee-hawness of it all. This look also makes me hope that I get early onset dementia so that I can forget I ever saw it. And have the joy of seeing it for the first time all over again. Because this is my favorite outfit I've ever seen. Now, I don't yet know what the premise or plot of this scene is. But I'm just gonna have to take a wild guess that they're running away from their eight-legged she-villain. And they hide in a western wear shop to escape her. And they have to put on some of the western clothes to disguise themselves. And then they come out in their disguises and realize, Human shop owners don't take too kindly to shoplifting. Let's run away again. And then she realizes her true worth or something in the movie ends. And like, probably breaks up with Ken, but I hope not. Alright, let's yeehaw downstairs and make this thing. But first, let's get coffee. First, we're going to make a mock up. Are you mocking me in a whispering voice? First, though, how many times is this girl gonna say first? Gotta treat you to a grand reveal of my new and improved snack. Warning, it's going to look exactly the same, except for that we painted it and put up some crown molding, so it's really pretty. Now, I don't know if this is a popular or unpopular opinion, but I find that cool gray paint on walls is very depressing, so I went with a more sunshiny color. Oh, and my fireplace had these divots in it, and I always wondered what it was supposed to look like 130 years ago, so I painted over the divots. Oh, and I replaced the light switch hardware. Oh, and of course I put an oil lamp up here, because you know our motto on this channel is, I love oil lamps. I actually think I've only said that like one other time in my life. I love oil lamps. It was in the Margot Robbie video! Full circle. Let's meet our mock-up fabric. This is Sam. Everyone say hi, Sam. Dad, you didn't say it. Let's try again. Everyone say hi, Sam! There you go. Funny story as to why her name is Sam. Now, I actually made the mock-up for the pants a few weeks ago, and they almost fit perfectly, but they were too tight and wouldn't close on the side, so I had to add more fabric, but because it was out of a striped fabric and I knew it would be hard lining up the stripes, I wanted to do a contrasting fabric. So I used this, and then I ended up looking like a disco Uncle Sam. Here's the worst part of the story. The jeans that I traced to get that pattern, well, I ended up cutting those jeans up and turning them into a top, so now I no longer have them to trace to make the pink pants, but I do have a really cute denim top. So either we're gonna have to cut up my disco Uncle Sam pants or figure something else out. In any case, this is too much stress for me to deal with right now, so we're just gonna work on the best. Quick reminder. Here is the gorgeous vest that we are attempting to recreate. Now we're going to gloss over this whole mock-up process because I mostly did it out of frame. But don't worry, the part of the video where I make the actual vest will have slightly more instructional value. Oh, here comes the part where I was trying to figure out how I was going to make it close in the front. So I was digging through that chest of drawers trying to find Velcro, and I didn't, but I did find this. I took that as a sign that I could just sew the front shut. No need to add any closures because the final fabric will be so hecka stretchy. Bad news, I went through a drive-thru and my total was 1963. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's the year JFK died. And the guy taking my order was like, please pull forward to the next window. Not like, oh, you're smart. Nothing, no reaction. So where does that leave us? The seats. Oh my gosh, and I'm not kidding, right as I film this, is that not crazy? Is that not crazy? If the crazy coincidentality of that instance does not shock you, well, you clearly need to dust off your time machine and take it out on a few more trips. Update, I touched up my eye makeup and then realized I haven't seen Gary in since I got home. Hey, Gary. Gary in. He's definitely somewhere around here, so I'm gonna have to break out my special weapon. Not that one. Stand by me. I hear him. Song? Literally, no matter how dead asleep Garyan is, no matter how long he doesn't respond for if I play that song, he always <laughs> screeches and he tries to do it on the beat. Okay, time for bed. So yeah, this is the general idea, except hopefully much better. What's that? You wanted a grand reveal of this guy Uncle Sam here? I want you. Compliment my outfit. Now, while this may look comfortable, these pants are actually unfathomably stiff, but I think the top looks pretty cute with some jorts. The following is a dramatization. Warning, unlikable female protagonist. Hey. Does your breath stink? Yeah. Have you tried everything to fix it and nothing will work? Yeah. Well, that's really awful for you. I really like your outfit. Oh, thanks. You know, I learned a long time ago that the key to really living like Barbie is having a huge fashionable wardrobe. And I found that ThreadUp really helps with that. ThreadUp is the internet's largest consignment slash thrift store where you can find all your favorite brands for up to 90% off original estimated retail price. Take, for instance, this velvet J. Krusker, originally $60, but I got it for the juicy price of $4.99. This Zara shirt was originally $43, but I got it for $17.99. Let's look at me in more cute outfits. 
This Zara shirt was originally $10, but I got it for $4.89. And this Universal Thread denim skirt was originally $18, but I got it for $4.99. This San Francisco brand t-shirt was originally $13, but I got it for $7.99. It's the perfect shirt to wear while exploring Facebook Marketplace for a motorcycle and then going and buying that motorcycle and giving it to someone a month early for their birthday. Happy birthday. This delightfully disturbing Zara t-shirt was originally $11, but I got it for $7.99. It's perfect for making people ask, what was in that drink I just drank? This Rosie hoodie was originally $25, but I got it for $8.39. It's so cute that your friend who's in labor may take the time to compliment you between contractions. I like your sweater. Thank you. And saving what is arguably the best for last. This Moda International shirt was originally $51, but I got it for $13.29. And this twin set Simona Barbieri skirt was originally $125, but I got it for, go ahead, try and guess, Wrong. $4.99. Oh, and real quick, I feel like I should add August is National Second Hand Month. So to congratulate it, take your first one and give your second one a high five. Then use both those hands to head on over to Thread Up and buy some thrifted outfits. Did you know that buying one item thrifted as opposed to new saves enough water to make iced coffee every day for four years? years. What do you think of that second hand? Makes me want to visit Thread Up. Me too, second hand. So do yourself, your wallet, your closet, and the environment a favor and visit Thread Up. When you do, don't forget to use the very original and creative code MACARA35 for 35% off your first order. And what the heck, have some free shipping as well. Thanks again, Thread Up. And happy second hand month. Hey, when do I get a month? Shut up, first hand. It might not fix your bad breath, but it will fix your bad wardrobe. Now let's start working on the actual top. To make this giddy up get up, we're going to be using a fabric called neoprene, also known as scuba. We're using it so that we can work with a four-way stretch and also so that we can go snorkeling after we're done playing Barbie. The front of our vest will be made of two layers of this shape. Sew those two layers together along the edge of the top, the bottom, and the armpits, leaving the sides open. Flip it right side out, lay it flat, then draw this design on it with chalk. You're going to simply zigzag stitch over those lines, creating the illusion that your bodice is comprised of a larger number of complex pattern pieces than it is. This is what we call trickery stitchery. Full disclosure though, I forgot to add the pockets and I had to go back and add them later. Trace the front to make the back, but make the back neckline more rounded and the bottom more straight. To save fabric, I made the back out of just one layer, then hemmed all the raw edges under like so, though that's not necessarily necessary because the edges aren't raw because this is neoprene not meat. I tried it on and marked it before sewing the front and back together. Then I sewed the straps together at the top. I noticed my wrist kind of hurt and I guess that's why. The shirt went relatively quick and turned out great. The armpits come up a little bit too high for comfortable crime fighting though, so I think I'm gonna have to take them down. Like, it's you wouldn't get it anyway. Then I went to a thrift store to find frames for these printed out pictures that I got for this room, the one that was in the intro, and I found that my dad and I's taste in frames didn't really match up. Dad, no. Not funny. Not funny at all, dad. All right, today we're gonna I don't want to lose these. Oh, them somewhere we won't forget them. Have a right over in front of that little head. Yes, this book is great. You should check it out. Today we're going to make these pants. Now I'm a little bit nervous, especially considering, as I said, I threw away the pants that I originally traced to make the Uncle Sam pants. So I was thinking I'd have to cut up a pair of pants that I like to trace. When luckily my little housemate said she was getting rid of a pair of pants. And it, no, it was no accident that I said little housemate. They're not exactly the length that we're looking for or the level of high risedness that we're looking for, but I think that we can make them work. be continued when he's done playing. This is a great time to bring up that people have been taking any chance that they can get to tell me to make this outfit. Like I asked Instagram what their best jury duty story was and I got requests even there. We're back. Trace that front leg panel on two layers of fabric and trace that back leg panel on two layers of fabric. Make a skirt for your knee by letting the chalk cascade down into a gentle disco flare. Be sure to make it a few inches wider and longer than you think it should be. I mean it, no back top. Okay, now I guess we're gonna sew along the end seams first and then maybe like this area. That's right, you're going to take the front left pant leg and slap it on top of the back left pant leg and sew along the inside seams stopping at the crotch. Then repeat those same thrilling steps on the right leg. Fan out those two pant legs like so, lay them on top of each other, right sides facing each other, then sew along the crotch. Lastly, you'll tack those outside seams. But before you do, be sure to awkwardly try it on, then pin it in place so it fits perfectly. It was around this point in the project I realized Margot Robbie's pants had two little stars slapped on her booty patootie, not to be confused with Scooty Patootie, the name of my scooter gang. Okay, I know that I have shiny pink fabric somewhere, because I got it for like a dollar at Yard. I was gonna make a swimsuit out of it. But like, I just realized I'm too old to swim now, so I might as well use it on this. <gasps> my fanny pack. <gasps> Wait, what? Real money. With this new surge of wealth, I could finally afford to take my housemate's dog and my bird on a walk. I love becoming one with nature. Doesn't everyone? Dad, do I look like Daredevil? A little bit. <laughs> okay, now what was I doing? Oh yes, I was going to make stars out of this. <gasps> There's more? 
To make those Heine garnishes, I cut out fabric stars, then labored greatly with heat and bond, but the scuba fabric didn't take too well to that. You'll have more luck if you use hot glue or E6000. After sewing your pants closed along the sides, allow your ears to be serenaded by the sweet sound of scissors cutting off the excess fabric. So your pants are too long and you don't have 10 inch heels. What now? Either dip the bottom of the pants in a highly corrosive acid or just cut off a few inches. Now you may notice that her waistline dips into sort of a V. I tried to mimic that effect when folding under my waistband. And don't worry, it should still stretch enough to fit over your patootie provided that you use a zigzag stitch. That looks pretty great. That is literally just straight up dumb luck that it turned out this good. If only my stars would have turned out so lucky. Then I would have sanked them. Get it? I feel like the missing member of- Okay, hi, yeah, I'm just worried maybe you guys didn't get it. Thank my lucky stars. I feel like the missing member of ABBA. Still getting sort of a Power Rangers feel. <laughs> oh wait, no, that's- What is that? I've never actually seen an episode of Power Rangers. I wasn't allowed to watch it growing up. And you're probably asking, what's in Power Rangers that's so bad? Well, I don't know. Why would you ask me that? I just said I've never seen an episode. So we stopped in Hobby Lobby, but only because their new sign was just so inviting. It's way better than the old one that was so big and bright and just like honestly trying too hard. Just kidding. The real reason I went in was to see her. Do you still refuse to have your face shown? Yes. It's been four years. The people want to see. Before I uh, retire, you can. Then I went to Walmart for some serotonin. Ooh, cute dress. Aside from the croissant in the hair. Then I went to the thrift store to get the black Ken shirt. Before checking out, make sure your shirt has the Gary and seal of approval. <laughs> then I was spotted like an endangered animal in the wild. I told the camera how you found me. Her Barbie cars in the parking lot. Yeah. I just watched that video yeah. probably a week ago. Amaya. And Lauren. Hi oh, guys. That was definitely the highlight of my day, followed closely by this interaction with Courtney's mom. I came by and I asked, where'd you get that? The Cracker Barrel dumpster? And she said, yes. It literally actually came from the Cracker Barrel dumpster. <laughs> Good morning, it's 4 p.m. Let's get decorating. Come into my sunroom. Welcome to my sunroom. Let's turn this into a little decoration workshop. Oh, where are the supplies? Achoo! <laughs> There they are. Now let's turn this masterpiece into a masterpiece. I kind of completely forget what these are supposed to look like, and I left the reference photo all the way in the next room. But have no fear. That's what the internet is for. You know, the internet gets a lot of flack for like making us lazy and ruining people's lives. But like unpopular opinion, I like the internet. I wouldn't have a job without it. I would, but I'd probably be a janitor. And as far as like ruining people's lives, I'd actually like to make the opposite case because apparently my great great grandma when she was younger was super allergic to poison ivy and someone told her if you eat poison ivy, you'll be immune to it. So she ate poison ivy and her throat closed up and I guess she almost died. And I mean like back in the old days, you couldn't Google something like that. You just had to trust people. But now we have the internet internet and so we don't have to trust people. I don't have to trust anyone ever in my life. That's I don't see how that's destroying the fabric of society. Speaking of fabric, I tested several methods to try and emulate the fabric on Margot Barbie's bell bottoms. From ironing on fabric stars, to putting fabric paint on a stamp and stamping the stars on, gluing on fabric stars, but nothing seemed to work quite as well as these little star stencils that I cut out of a piece of cardboard. After painting through the stencil, you simply dust on some glitter and voila. I made a stencil for the small and large stars, but for the medium sized ones, I just free handed. I don't know why making a medium sized stencil was like too much work for me why that's where I drew the line. Time for a bonfire break. The bonfire was relaxing aside from this tiny little explosion that happened because I left the lighter in there but it made me wish my good friend Bella was there to tell me a highly engaging campfire story. He was scared and her wife was just having another baby. How much time passed? One year. The one was already 18 years old. The first baby was 18 years old and one year later after he was born the second one was born. Yes but it happened. The boy died. Which boy? The boy that was married. He got back up and then- and He's dead at this point? He's almost dead. He said, I got bit by a rattlesnake. I'm also allergic. You know, I've heard that a lot of humans actually are allergic to rattlesnakes. Maybe we should try eating them. Now what I'm working on here is a faux lace up front to the pants. I specifically added that sound so that if you're watching the video with your dog, it would make it look up. Now for this little lacy do around the neck. I marked out the spots for my grommets with chalk, then I installed them. To lace through those perforations, I cut out an extremely narrow, long piece of neoprene. Now let's adhere the cute little facade to the pants. Hello? It's doodle time. What doodles? These doodles. Use chalk to make a couple gently tapering lines, then go over it with fabric paint. While you do, watch the show Crimes That Rocked Australia in the spirit of Margot Robbie. So... Let me finish getting ready and then I'll explain. As I was saying, I'm dressed like this because I have church tonight. This is when I'm wearing a church.
First, though, I had to stop in and see my dad, where I ran into Chantel and her little daughter, Ariel. Hey, Ariel! Hi! Is that Mikera or is that Grandma? What? Do I look pretty? No. Yeah, you look pretty creepy as heck. But I wasn't the only one who looked elderly that day. No, I'm not insinuating that she looked elderly. No, I. Oh, not him either. Well, no, I was trying to say that Joe also. Joe looked like this, and this is what it looked like when he played kickball with the with the youth group. Then it was time for my old feeble bones to get back to work. And honestly, though, after like six hours of hunching over painting stars, I felt it. I have so much more to paint. I'm too old for this. So instead of getting right back to painting, I attacked the buttons. Then, due to my lack of exercising forethought, I had to add the pockets at the end. And remember, we're just making fake pockets with stitching. We don't need actual pockets because that's what Ken's for. He can hold your stuff. Here's a very meta shot of me seam ripping the middle of my pockets. Be honest, did you think that was your phone? Because I did. When I was editing it, I looked for my phone. I was like, oh, that, that was in the video. Add some stars to your vest, but don't put any where your heart would be. Just in case you're in the Wild West and someone says, shoot for the stars, you know? So to protect myself, I didn't put any there. Then I said, well, let's get cleaned up. Let's get cleaned up. Wow, okay, listen, if you wanna feel gorgeous in your own skin, do old people makeup for a day. Let's backtrack. Just do your makeup in a manner that you normally wouldn't for a day and then take a shower and when you come out, you'll feel like you're gorgeous. Now to paint the back half of the pants. That's right, we painted the front and then had to wait a whole day for it to dry. I'm ready for bed. Dude, look at this fighter's nose and look how Joe's little nephews get to the top bunk of their hammock bunks. If you haven't noticed, I'm like going through my camera roll as I'm making these videos. So whatever's in the camera roll just kind of ends up in the video. I had a rat once too. I spent the next afternoon on the phone with my mom while making some more stars until at long last, it was time to freehand my last medium star. On to Ken's shirt. Rip off the tag, then accidentally turn your camera off. Just realized I literally did not record any of this. After that, you've earned the right to sit back and relax with your ice white mocha light on the ice. One extra pump of mocha adds sweet cream cold foam. Dude, you're telling me you can walk on that? What are you, Peter? Jesus, I guess Peter's saying. <laughs> oh, I hope not think I was waving goodbye frantically. You know what? I don't mind if my neighbors think I have an unhealthy attachment to them. They are pretty cool. Hot glue some fringe onto your Ken shirt while watching a Canadian crime documentary. You know, to honor Ryan. I can't remember his last name. I tried the shirt on Joe's handsome stunt double and it looked pretty decent. Okay, Joe, ready to put on our Barbie and Ken outfits? But wait, our hair. Send in Paolo. These are my assistants, Gretchen and Helga. After some enjoyable time wasting, we tried to think of some western things to say. This song room ain't big enough for the two of us. There's, There's a snake, snake in my room. What do they say in Arizona? It's a dry heat. It's a dry heat. Oh, there you are. Get down here. Come here! We tried to recreate this picture, but didn't really get a satisfying one. This one was a strong contender. Um, this one was almost okay too, but Joe was busy tasting the air. Now in this one, he looks totally spot on, but I look like a Sasquatch. Then we went to dinner, and if you can't guess where, well, I don't know, there's the answer. And while we were there, oh, that female looks like my mom. Anyway, I thought I heard someone say my name behind me, but it was actually just this raccoon. And then later I thought I heard someone say my name behind me, and it was actually this kind woman. What's your name? Sarah Michael. Oh, hi, Sarah Michael. Okay, is that not like the most main character name you've ever heard? I think it's time you and I ride off into the sunset. And that's the story of how Barbie and Ken finally discovered the cure to rattlesnake allergy. Y'all come back now, you hear? And I hope you didn't forget, go check out Rose and use my code to care. 35, McCare 35. 35% off your first purchase. And free shipping! Bye.